instinct is a lie, told by a fearful body, hoping to be wrong. What's that supposed to mean? It means that when you base your expectations only on what you see, you blind yourself to the possibilities of a new reality. When Mike and Brian set out to write The Legend of Korra, they did so with the clear intent to create their antagonists with some sort of justification or bigger idea that would cause us, the audience, to stop and ask, are they the good guys? While the final villain of The Last Airbender was Fire Lord Ozai, a tyrannical megalomaniac with few, if any, redeeming qualities, the antagonists of Legend of Korra offer a lot more for the viewer to consider. One of the clearest examples of this was the antagonist of the third season, Zaheer. When we finally learn that the true intent of the Red Lotus is to kill Korra and end the Avatar cycle, Zaheer proclaims boldly that This band of brothers and sisters in anarchy are witnessing the beginning of an era of true freedom. It's here that Zaheer describes himself as an anarchist. To define the term extremely broadly, anarchism is a philosophy that heavily emphasizes individual freedom and is heavily skeptical of the justification of authority, especially those with political power. Anarchists often doubt whether we should even have a state or a government. In line with these anarchist beliefs, he explains to Korra that true freedom can only be achieved when oppressive governments are torn down. But this statement is a bit of an odd one. If Zaheer's anarchist beliefs were only concerned with quote, oppressive governments, then that leaves us with one puzzling question. Why kill the Avatar? After all, the Avatar is not a dictatorial tyrant oppressing people, right? Well, to answer this question, we need to understand two principles of Zaheer's anarchist philosophy. The Red Lotus dreams of a world without what I am going to call for this essay, institutions of authority. It's easy to understand why Zaheer would oppose monarchies. There are many people who oppose them on principle today. They're inherently unaccountable to their citizens and are historically prone to abuses of power that restrict the freedoms of their people. Zaheer rightly says, You think freedom is something that you can give or take on a whim. But to your people, freedom is just as essential as air. But Zaheer doesn't just oppose oppressive regimes like the Earth Queens. He is equally opposed to having a Fire Lord or a Water Tribe Chief. Both of these are institutions of authority that are unaccountable to their citizens. The fact that Fire Lord Zuko or Chief Tonrak are benevolent does not matter to the Red Lotus. Zaheer reminds Korra that It wasn't too long ago that the airbenders were nearly all wiped out thanks to the Fire Lord's desire for world dominance. You see, Zaheer is acutely aware of the potential of these institutions to restrict the freedoms of others in the future, and it is that potential that justifies their elimination in his mind. Foremost, the first principle of Zaheer's philosophy is this. If a person is under constant potential threat of the loss of their freedom, they are not truly free. But this explanation still doesn't offer an answer as to why the Red Lotus wants to end the Avatar cycle. The Avatar by nature is not a form of hereditary power like that of a monarch, and every single Avatar is different. So where does Zaheer's issue lie? After I watched through season 3 once more, I realised that Zaheer is concerned with alleviating a far more subtle kind of oppression than, say, Amon or Kuvira were, where those who are oppressed may not even realise that they are oppressed. In fact, they may willingly reinforce the institutions of authority that oppress them and those they love. This is never clearer than in Yin. Marco and Bolin's grandmother. Despite living impoverished in the lower ring of Ba Sing Se and being disadvantaged by the Earth Queen's over extravagance and dictatorial rule, she scolds those who dare criticize Her Majesty. Ooh. Don't talk like that about Her Majesty. Long may she reign. This respect and reverence for the Earth Queen is so deeply instilled in her that when her house is burning down, the one thing she takes with her is her photo of the Earth Queen. Now, remember what Zaheer wants, a world where a man's only allegiance is to himself and those he loves. This is Zaheer's ultimate belief, 
A person can never be free in a society and culture that teaches them that they owe their allegiance to institutions of authority without ever questioning why they deserve their allegiance. That teaches them they should obey, revere, or respect the authority of institutions like the Earth Queen. How can they be free when a. they are forced to abide by laws dictated to them by others, and b. the only reason they accept this is because they are indoctrinated into cultures that make them believe it is okay. That makes them believe they owe their allegiance to this institution and should respect its authority. When Zaheer tells the Earth Queen before he kills her that I don't believe in queens, he is making a point. The only reason these institutions have political and social authority is because people are indoctrinated into believing they should have it. The same sort of reverence can be seen in regards to the Fire Lord when Bolin cries, Oh my gosh, it's Lord Zuko! I can't believe it! <laughs> Even Korra cannot escape her biases when she admits, Would you think the world would be better off if leaders like them were eliminated? No. I mean, I don't really agree with what they've done, but taking out world leaders isn't the answer. And Boomy half-heartedly says, Well, technically, the Earth Queen has a right to conscript her citizens. Now, while an offhanded remark, it does reflect how deeply ingrained these institutions of authority are into society. On some level, each of them believe that these institutions are justified, when in reality, their power is entirely without basis. These people are not naturally better leaders. Bolin, Boomy, Korra, and everyone else have just grown up in a culture that reinforces these institutions by teaching people that they owe them their allegiance. This is the second principle of Zaheer's philosophy. A person is not free if they are indoctrinated by their culture into believing institutions of authority should have authority over them. It is in the vein of this second principle that Zaheer sees the Avatar as the ultimate institution of authority that needs to be eliminated. By Korra's time, the Avatar has approval ratings in Republic City. She holds press conferences like that of a politician. Korra automatically has access to the Republic City Council and other world leaders, and is often treated as above the law purely by virtue of being born the Avatar. Zaheer points out the expanded political power of the Avatar as well. We are what the White Lotus was meant to be, but after the Hundred Year War, the White Lotus lost its true purpose. Its members came out of hiding and openly served the Avatar. They became nothing but glorified bodyguards. The White Lotus was at least originally partially intended to make the Avatar accountable to someone, where no single nation could. But the Avatar is now the head of it, the head of an international organization with the capabilities to interfere with individuals on a worldwide scale. And the culture teaches people to think that she deserves this power. Zaheer wishes for a world where a man's allegiance is only to himself and those he loves. But this same toxic culture of reverence and allegiance that surrounds monarchs can also be seen in regards to the Avatar. The Sages were a group in the Fire Nation. In the past, the Sages were loyal only to the Avatar. Being something of a priesthood, their loyalty to the Avatar is akin to a pseudo-religious following. They even bow before him. Suyin, Beifong's son, Wing, even comments that it's an honor to be dueling with the Avatar. I can't believe I'm sparring with the Avatar. Likewise, in Aang's travels, he was often revered and given special privileges purely because he was the Avatar. In the final episode of the season, Tenzin says that The world getting more and more dangerous, we need the Avatar now more than ever. And this sentiment is echoed by numerous characters all throughout the series. It creates this sense of authority in the Avatar for bringing the world to balance that both Korra and all of those around her buy into. This was never clearer than in the online comic series, where Kyoshi tells us about the peasant uprising in Ba Sing Se where she admonished the Earth King for defying the Avatar. Kyoshi expected the Earth King to obey her, and Zaheer sees this kind of entitlement as a problem. Most importantly, the Red Lotus realized a long time ago that You made the world this way, we're just living in it! Of any institution of authority, the world has been undeniably shaped more by the consequences of the Avatar's actions. 
who should be protected and who should be punished has often been determined by them and them alone. Just as even democratic states like Republic City dictate where people can go and live with borders and regulations, Zaheer points that it was wrong for the Avatar to determine whether or not people were allowed to go into the spirit world. The idea of having nations and governments is as foolish as keeping the human and spirit realms separate. So back to our original question, why kill the Avatar? Fundamentally, the Avatar has become no different to the Fire Lord, the Water Tribe Chief, the President of Republic City, or the Earth Queen. The Avatar is an unaccountable institution of authority with almost limitless power. Zaheer even says as much in the fourth season. But my powers have limits. You're wrong. That poison should have killed you. But you were able to fight it off. You think your power has limits. I say... It's limitless. If the potential danger of a tyrannical Fire Lord is enough to justify their removal, then in Zaheer's philosophy, the potential danger of a tyrannical avatar is tenfold. Korra fits the criteria. Firstly, people are forced to abide by the avatar's moral standards, a person they did not choose to be in authority. And secondly, they are indoctrinated by their culture into revering the Avatar and believing they should have this authority over them. With these two principles, Zaheer aims to free people from an oppression they do not even realize they are under, the Avatar. The Red Lotus sees past the mythicism surrounding the Avatar, and merely because Korra can bend all four elements does not mean she should be afforded any special authority. She's just someone who was born with access to a nuclear arsenal. Of course, the obvious rebuttal to this is that the Avatar does not fit Zaheer's first principle. That they are not under the constant potential threat of the loss of their freedom, and that the Avatar has no real potential to turn tyrannical. But there isn't much merit to this argument. While each avatar has tried to do good in their world, their subjective perception of what good means has varied greatly. Avatar Kyoshi established the Dai Li as a means to protect the Earth Kingdom's cultural heritage, but however noble her intentions were, it was far from a good decision. They soon turned corrupt and began oppressing Earth Kingdom citizens. Roku's decision not to kill Fire Lord Sozin led to the deaths of possibly millions of people, Beyond this, Korra herself is clearly subject to her own biases. She is temperamental, impulsive, impatient, and prone to outbursts of anger in ways that Aang never was. Kyoshi expressed that she was perfectly willing to kill where she deemed it necessary. But I assure you, I would have done whatever it took to stop Chen. The truth is, there is no reason for anyone to believe that the Avatar will never interfere with the freedoms of others purposefully or unpurposefully. Avatars are neither automatically wise or good leaders. Zaheer's philosophy is based in the idea that nobody knows what is best for someone other than themselves. For this reason, Moronic president and monarchs can never truly make decisions in the best interests of their citizens. If elected officials cannot, then the Avatar surely can't. They do not know what is in the best interest of every citizen of the world. Not only is their moral judgement fallible, but historically it's often wrong, and we've seen it has detrimental consequences. So what can we understand as a here to believe? I think this statement best encompasses everything that the Red Lotus stands for. Where a man's only allegiance is to himself and those he loves. A man cannot be free when firstly, he is under the potential threat of the loss of his freedoms, and secondly, they are indoctrinated by their culture into believing institutions of authority should have authority over them. The Avatar has become an institution of authority in itself, that people have been raised to believe they owe their allegiance to, when the reality is that Korra is just someone else with fallible judgement, her own biases, and essentially a nuclear arsenal to take out whoever she chooses. People around the world give her unearned authority because they think she's somehow naturally wiser or better than she is because she's the Avatar. Zaheer's anarchist philosophy looks at this culture and simply asks, 
How is this right? Hey Subfuries, I really hope that you enjoyed kind of my first video essay type piece. And if you did, then please let me know down in the comments that you want me to do more. That would be really helpful. I have like 13 pages worth of notes and I really did put a lot of time and effort into scripting and making this video. I had like a whole thing that I wanted to talk about called the problem of tacit consent, but I think I clearly ran out of time. My question for you today is Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter? Let me know down in the comments below and I'd love for you to come join other subfuries following me on my second channel to the future. There's a link to that down in the comments below. It's more casual where you can get to know me and I would love to get to know you as well as uh, it'd be awesome if you follow me on Twitter, Wattpad, Facebook, email me stuff, uh, send me stuff that you've made at the address and links in the description below. Stay nerdy subfuries and I'll see you in the future.